Hi there. So today we are going to see about the topic male sterility and we will be discussing genetic male sterility in brief. So what is male sterility? The term male sterility is mainly characterized by the non-functional pollen grains along with functional female part. So it is unlike the self-incompatibility process. How? In self-incompatibility, the plant system produces functional pollen grains. Whereas in maize system, we have non-functional pollen grains. Again, the concept of sterility or the male sterility has long been known in plants. So in 1763, Carl Rutter reported another abortion and in 1932, Beadle has identified 15 maize male sterile genes. So in 1998, Carl the scientist named uh, Carl divided male sterility into four phenotypic classes based on the generalized phenotypic expression of male sterility in plants. So the first classification is structural male sterility. So this structural male sterility arises due to the absence of stamens or due to the malformation of any floral parts. And the second one would be the sporogenous male sterility. So this is due to the abnormal formation of pollen mother cells or some anomalies that occurs during meiosis. And the third and the last classification is functional male sterility. So here the male reproductive organs are almost normal but the pollen function is impaired or weakened. So apart from the classification given by Gall in 1998, the more widely accepted classification of uh, male sterility is as follows. So the first one would be our genetic male sterility or GMS, which can be further divided into three temperature sensitive GMS, photoperiod sensitive GMS and transgenic uh, male sterility. And the second classification is cytoplasmic male sterility. And third one would be the cytoplasmic G, genetic male sterility and chemically induced male sterility. So we will be seeing uh, one by one. But in this particular lecture, uh, we are only covering uh, the TGMS and PGMS that is coming under genetic male sterility. And in coming lecture, we will be seeing uh, about this TGMS, CMS, CGMS and chemically induced male sterility. So I would give a just uh, I would just uh, give a brief idea about these classifications. So, what do you mean by this uh, genetic male sterility? So why that uh, name is given as genetic male sterility? Because the genes that are governing the male sterility is present in the nucleus. So what the genes responsible for male sterility is present inside the nucleus hence it is called as genetic male sterility whereas in cytoplasmic male sterility the genes that are responsible for this uh, sterility is present in the cytoplasm or in particular we can uh, say it is present in the mitochondria or inside the chloroplast so it is only present in the cytoplasm that's why it is called cytoplasmic male sterility so now if you come to cytoplasmic genetic male sterility, in this particular case, the male sterile genes are present in both nucleus and also that are present inside the cytoplasm. So both genes would be contributing to the male sterility. That's why it is called a cytoplasmic genetic male sterility. So now coming to the fourth one. This is the chemically induced uh, male sterility. We will use certain artificial chemicals uh, which will induce the male uh, sterility. So, so that's all about the you know, overall consumption of this uh, classification and why that uh, name was given. So now coming to genetic male sterility or GMS. So this is majorly governed by a single recessive MS gene. So in majority of the plant species, the GMS is controlled by a single recessive MS gene. So uh, there is always some exceptions. So the exception is uh, seen in safflower, where the male sterility is governed by dominant genes. So now as far as the expression of MS genes or the way of expression of these genes are concerned, these MS genes act monogenically. And thus far the researchers or the scientists have found 
some 70 different MS genes in maize and some 64 different MS genes in tomato and 57 in barley. And the major cause for this uh, genetic male sterility is through spontaneous mutation which is naturally occurring or through the induced muta uh, mutations. So now let's see the inheritance pattern of the MS genes. So on the left hand side, we have a male sterile line. Uh, this is a recessive homozygous parent which is denoted by small MS and small MS. So this is obviously will be our female parent. But on the other hand, we have the male fertile line, which is a dominant homozygous parent, and this will be our male parent. So why this is male and why this is female? The reason is very simple, because the male sterile lines cannot produce any functional pollens or viable pollens, hence it has to be female, whereas the male fertile line uh, would obviously produce functional pollen grains, so this is the male parent. So, there is no change in that uh, pattern. So, now these two parents are crossed to produce a male fertile heterozygous F1 progeny which is denoted by this capital M as a small m. Again, this F1 progeny is subjected to selfing to produce F2 generation which segregates in a genotypic ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1. And here, we get three fertile lines and one sterile line. Among these fertile segregants, one is a homozygous dominant or similar to your parental type. Whereas the other two are heterozygous and these two will be like your F1 progenies. So this is how the MS genes will inherit uh, from parent to F1 and how it segregates in F2 generations. So now coming to the maintenance of male sterile lines. So uh, the parental combination will be as same as what we have seen in the inheritance pattern. So on the left hand side we have a female parent which is a homozygous recessive male sterile line uh, which is again denoted by small letters CMS and MS on, and on the right hand side we have the male parent which is a homozygous dominant male fertile sibline. So what is a sibline? So this male parent is very much related or is a relative of this female parent. So that's all what we mean by this word sib. So whatever we are using as a male parent should be a sibline of that female parent. So now these two parents are crossed between each other to produce a heterozygous male fertile F1 progeny which is again denoted by capital MS and small MS. So this is just uh, up to now this is just a repetition of that uh, inheritance pattern. Now this F1 is now back crossed with the male sterile, uh, the male sterile line that uh, small letter MS MS which segregates in the genotypic ratio of 1 is to 1 resulting in one heterozygous male fertile line and a homozygous recessive male sterile lines and the seeds are only uh, collected from the male sterile segregant whereas the seeds are not harvested from the male fertile lines or the male fertile segregants. So this male sterile lines can be thus maintained indefinitely through a uh, seed mating or just a repetition of this uh, cross can be done indefinitely to maintain this male sterile line. So as I discussed earlier, the GMS can be of two types and let us start with the TGMS or temperature sensitive GMS. So here in case of our TGMS, the complete male sterility is achieved at a higher temperatures. For example, in case of uh, the rice TGMS line PEI AI645, the complete male sterility is obtained at 23.3 degrees Celsius or above. Whereas the fertility, the normal fertility can be restored at the temperatures below this critical limit that is less than 23.3 degree Celsius. So now coming to the development stage that is sensitive to these temperatures. Uh, uh, probably last from the formation of the pollen mother cells to meiosis stage in 
case of uh, rice crop. So again, in TGMS lines, the photo period, the photo period only has a very limited effect in determining the lowest temperature at which complete male sterility is achieved. So let us have a look at the model of sterility expression for TGMS rice before we step into the crossing scheme. So in this picture which is uh, shown on the right hand side, so at higher temperature or up to the reproductive upper limit, we can go for F1 seed production as the TGMS line uh, will be sterile in nature at uh, this region. Whereas at low temperature or up to the reproductive lower limit, we can go for the indefinite maintenance or the uh, maintenance of the sterile line or your A line or whatever we can call, we can go for the multiplication of sterile line as the TGMS line in this region would remain fertile. But anything in between these uh, critical temperature points, uh, so the in between region is here. So anything in between these critical temperature points could result in partial sterility. So it could re uh, result in a partial sterility. So it is something like a border region or the horizon uh, or what else we can say. This is uh, neither here or nor there kind of region. So we do not need this region at all because this will cause many anomalies in the hybrid seed production uh, protocol. And interestingly, uh, you may think what happens uh, beyond this reproductive upper and lower limit. So the answer is so simple. Beyond this limit, the rice crop won't be able to survive or uh, complete its reproductive cycle successfully. So that's a simple reason. Uh, we have beyond that uh, reproductive upper and lower limits. So now coming to the crossing scheme for the DGMS uh, 5460S. Uh, line as an we are taking that uh, TGMS line as an example. So now uh, coming to the crossing scheme of that line, consider two locations, uh, location A and B. So location A is having a temperature less than 28 degrees Celsius, uh, whereas the location B is having an average temperature above 30 degrees Celsius. So in case of 5460S line, any temperature below 28 degrees Celsius results in fertility and any temperature above 30 degrees Celsius results in complete sterility. Okay. So now in location A, the TGMS line is fertile. Thus, the line can be maintained indefinitely by mere selfing. Hence, there is no need for a separate maintainer line to cross with. So, the role of maintainer uh, or the role of maintainer line or uh, the process of maintaining the male sterile line is carried out by this specific environmental condition or that temperature uh, or that specific temperature uh, region. So, now coming to the location B, as said earlier. Uh, due to the higher temperature in location B that is above 30 degrees Celsius, the TGMS line here becomes sterile. Uh, this the same TGS line was fertile uh, in temperature regions that is having uh, less than 28 degrees Celsius. But as uh, the TGMS line got transferred to the location B which is having a higher temperature that is above 30 degrees Celsius, the TGMS line became sterile. So, now, this sterile line is being crossed with any desirable male fertile line or your restorer line which would result in your hybrid seed production. So, this is the overall uh, crossing scheme for TGMS line in rice. Uh, we have taken this 560S as an example. So, now coming to the second classification of uh, GMS, the photo period sensitive uh, GMS. So this is almost similar to that of the temperature sensitive GMS. But here we not only require an appropriate photo period, but we also require a critical temperature range. But whereas in temperature sensitive, we only require an appropriate temperature. But uh, in case of PGMS line, we 
to occur both photo period and the critical temperature region. So for example in rice the critical temperature range is uh, something between 23 to 29 degrees Celsius. So within this uh, critical temperature range complete male sterility can be achieved under long day condition that is more than 13 hours whereas normal fertility can be restored under short day conditions. So regarding the sensitive stage of development to a photo period is something between this uh, differentiation of secondary rachis branches to the pollen mother cell formation. So what are the requirements for an ideal PGMS lines? So if a line is uh, to be considered as an ideal PGMS line, then it should have a low critical temperature uh, for fertility restoration and a high critical temperature for sterility induction and should have a wide temperature range for photo period sensitivity. And apart from these characters, uh, there should be a strong interaction between uh, the photo period factor and that of the temperature factor. So these four factors, if, uh, if these four requirements are met, then that particular line can be set as an ideal PGMS line. So for a successful hybrid seed production in rice using both TGMS and PGMS, certain requirements or standards have to be met. So I have listed out some uh, some, uh, some of that requirements. The first one would be that uh, the male sterile line should exhibit 100% sterility. So again, the same A line or the male sterile line should be morphologically uniform and it should have a highly efficient fertility regulation uh, mechanism. And the fourth uh, point would be that the environmental conditions uh, in that particular time or in that particular location must be in such a way that the male sterility in that uh, line should last for at least 30 consecutive days or for a month. Again, the seed set percentage, the seed set, per, uh, set percentage on the male sterile lines upon multiplication should be over 30 percentage. And the sixth point is a very crucial point. So the purity of parental lines, the purity of parental lines is a foremost priority in GMS than in CMS. Again. Uh, the minimum isolation distance while going for hybrid seed production should be uh, at a minimum of 200 meter and uh, time isolation of more than 30 days is crucial for the successful hybrid seed production. So thank you for listening to the lecture male sterility part 1 and in the coming parts of male sterility uh, we will see transgenic GM, uh, GMS, CMS, CGMS and difference between these uh, male sterility systems and what is two line and three line breeding etc. So uh, see you in the uh, next lecture. Thank you.